one thing that keep in mind, what's happening with the cross product is whenever you use the right hand rule to predict the direction of the output vector, the, the answer, that direction of that vector, the cross product is always gonna be perpendicular to the plane of wherever the two vectors lie. So if you imagine any two vectors in three dimensional space, they could point anywhere. If you have two lines in three dimensional space, I'll always be able to put those two lines in some plane. If they're in the xy plane down here, and this is the z direction, both of those vectors will lie in the xy plane. If I have both of them over here, I can define some slanted oblique plane where they will lie. If they're pointed both like this way, then I can figure out another plane where they're both lie. Any two lines, you can always define, meaning vectors are, are not lines, but they're, they're linear arrows that we draw, right? Uh, you can always find a plane that will contain any two vectors, right? And the cross product, since you're grabbing one and crossing it into the other, your thumb will always point in a perpendicular direction to whatever plane contains the two vectors. So if they're both in the xy plane, if you cross one direction, you will always get a direction of the cross product in the z direction, which is perpendicular to the xy plane. Or if you go the other way and cross it in the reverse order, maybe in the negative z direction. So I just wanted to make sure and bring that to the forefront, that the direction of the cross product vector that you get as an answer is always perpendicular to wherever the two uh, original vectors lie in space, to whatever plane contains those two vectors in space. All right, let's go and solve our first problem. Now, actually, I don't want to. I don't want to do this one yet. We'll do that one in a second. Let's solve this problem right here. I'm telling you that the magnitude of vector a is 10 meters long. This could be a displacement vector, let's say, and the magnitude of vector b is six meters long. All right. Um, I want you to also tell you that the angle between vectors a and b in three-dimensional space or wherever wherever they're pointed is 60 degrees. So we want to calculate the magnitude of the vector product. So if you see the word vector product, that just means a cross product. It's called a vector product because the outcome of the calculation is a vector, whereas the dot product just produces a scalar, a number, which is why we call it the scalar product. So what we remember is that we know how to find the cross product of vectors. What we say is a cross b, what we, uh, the way we introduce it, is we say that's magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. But this is really a little bit misleading. What you're really calculating when you do A, B sine theta is you're finding the magnitude of the cross product vector, right? So books don't usually write this. It's kind of implied when you do A, B sine theta, magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them, what you're getting is the length of the of the cross product vector, the magnitude of it. But in order to get the direction, you need to use your hands. The cross product uh, or the, the, uh, the right hand rule is gonna tell you with your thumb the direction of the output vector. Now, this is great when you're working in the xy plane because it's gonna be either the, the positive z or the negative z direction, right? But in three dimensional space where the vectors are pointed anywhere, the right hand rule, even though it's true, it's actually true and it will point in the correct direction, we, we generally solve the cross product using the matrix, the determinant of the matrix like I showed you, because it's very hard in three dimensional space to apply the right hand rule and know exactly what direction your thumb is actually pointed, pointing. But in this case, notice we don't know where in space vector A lies. We don't know if it's in the XY plane or anything, we just know the length of the arrow. We don't know where vector B is pointed, we just know the length of the arrow. But that's okay because we're not asked to find the, the actual vector cross product, we're, find, we're finding the magnitude of the vector cross product. And that means we only care about the length of the arrow. So I put the bars around it to remind us of that. The length of vector A is given by 10. The length of vector B is given by six. And the sine of the angle between them is uh, taking the sine of 60 degrees, all right? And so if you take 10 times six, you'll get 60. And if you put 60 in your calculator and take the sign, of course you already know it's square root of three over two, so you can get the exact answer, but in a decimal form, just for, for quickness here, 0 0.866, just note that we're truncating this, the decimals really go on forever. Uh, then what happens is when we calculate this, we get uh, approximately equal to 52. In other words, we get a number very close. I, I believe it's 51 point and then there is very, very close to 52. I'm rounding it to 52. When you multiply this out, it does not come exactly to 52, but that's close enough for this example. And this is literally the magnitude of vector A crossed with vector B. 
So this is just telling us the length of the arrow that comes about after we do this cross product. If the problem were different, and the problem said, tell me the actual cross product of these vectors, then I would need to know the magnitude of the answer and its direction. But the only way I could find its direction is if I have more information, because this is not enough. I mean, a, b sine theta tells me the length, but how would I find the direction? I, I would need to use my right hand rule and curl my fingers uh, in order to be able to do that. But because I don't know where A and B are in space, they could be pointed here, they could be pointed here, they could be doing all kinds of things. I have no idea where they are. So I cannot take the full cross product, including the direction, because I'm not given that in the problem. But the problem doesn't ask for that. The problem says find the magnitude of the vector product. So if you ever see a problem that you think you don't have enough information to solve, because you might say, I can't find the cross product. I don't know where these vectors are, really, pointed. I just know their lengths. Read the problem carefully because it might not even be asking you for that, like we have done here. So all of that to say it's, it's magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine of the angle between them. This is the length of the cross product vector. If you wanted to find its direction, you would need to know where these are pointed, and then you could find the, use the right-hand rule. All right, problem number two. For problem number two, I'm going to give you two vectors. Vector A is 3i plus 5j, and vector B is 2i plus 4j. And I want to find the cross product, A cross product with B, A cross B. Now, what we're going to do is solve it without any pictures, any drawings, and we're also not even going to need to use the right-hand rule, even though we could if we wanted to. Once we get the answer, then we will draw a sketch as a sanity check to verify that our answer makes sense. Okay? Now, these two vectors are given to us in component notation, in unit vector notation. So we're going to calculate the cross product in the easiest way possible. Since the vectors were given to us in unit vector notation, the fastest and easiest way is going to be to take the determinant of that matrix that I taught you in the last lesson. On the other hand, if these vectors were already given to us in the other notation, if I gave you the magnitude and the angle of each of the vectors, then depending on the situation, it might be actually faster to do a, b, sine of theta to get the magnitude and then use the right-hand rule to figure out the direction. But we're not given that. We're given the unit vector notation. So because of that, we're going to calculate it the easiest way possible. All right. So what we know is that vector A crossed with vector B is going to be equal to the determinant of a large matrix. But the top row of the matrix is always I, J, and K. It's always the same. And then in the next row, I need to put A. It's uh, 3 for I, 5 for J, and there's no K component for the Z component, so that's zero. And I'm crossing into B, so that goes in the last row, two, and then four, and then again, it doesn't have any Z, uh, uh, Z component as well. All right, so next I have to, to actually pull this off. I'm gonna work on the I component first, so I'm gonna put an I here and open a parentheses, and I'm gonna mentally cover up this column and cover up this row. I'm only gonna have these four numbers left, I'm gonna take its determinant, Chris cross. It's five times zero, minus zero times four, okay? Then I'm gonna work on the J component, but when I do this determinant business, I have to insert a minus sign here. This minus sign comes from the linear algebra that you learn in, in other classes on how to take the determinant of a three by three matrix. This term always has that negative there. You can learn about that in calculus or linear algebra where that comes from. Just suffice it to say, it always shows up in a determinant of a three by three matrix. All right, now I'm working on this term. And on inside of here, I cover up this column in this row, and I only have these four numbers. So I do crisscross three times zero, and then minus zero times two. All right, that's that term. And then plus the K term. The K term, I cover up this, and I cover up this. I now have these four numbers, crisscross three times four, and then minus five times two. All right, now I've got everything in place. Now, what do I have for the i component? I have zero minus zero, so I basically have zero. And I have minus j right here, inside here, zero minus zero, so I have zero. And then I have a k component right here, which is 12 on the inside, minus this, which is 10. So what I say is that the vector cross product a cross with b is nothing for the i component, nothing for the j component, but the k component has a two right there, so it's just two in the k direction. So this vector, from the answer has a length of two pointed upwards in the positive z direction. Now, let's just do a sanity check and see if this makes any sense at all. 
is it plausible that the vector would be pointed in that direction? So again, we didn't have to do any drawings. We didn't have to do any right-hand rule. When you learn how to do determinants like this, Notice it was like one line of math. It's way faster to do this. You do have to be careful and you do have to practice it. And of course there's some technique to it, but once you get it, you don't have to wonder, where, where's the right hand rule? What, what direction is it going? Um, and you don't have to, to worry about making those mistakes, but you do have to be careful when you take that determinant, obviously, okay? Now the A vector was three I plus five J. So one, two, three, and five J. One, two, three, four, five, like that. So. This first vector, this is five. So one, two, three, four, five. So this vector is right there and it's pointed basically like here, here's vector A. Now vector B is two I plus four J. Two I and one, two, three, four J means the tip of this arrow will be, that's not quite right, but you get the idea. It's somewhere right around here, something like that. Two I and then four J, that's probably a little high, but you get the idea. So anyway, it comes down and it, it looks something like this. And that's more or less where, where it's at. It's, that's not exactly right, but you get the idea. And this is vector B. So if, we're, we, if we were to take this cross product uh, and use the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the answer, we would do the right hand rule. A is cutting into B. A cross B means we cut into A first, then we cut into B first. My thumb is pointed 90 degrees away, 90 degrees from the plane of the board, perpendicular to the board where these vectors lie. And if this is X and Y, I guess I could label them. If this is X and Y, then the Z direction comes out, X cross with Y, Z current direction is towards you. And so the, the cross product of these vectors must lie in the K hat direction. So that would be the direction, though that makes sense with our answer. How would we verify that the magnitude was two? If you wanted to do it, you would have to first find, you would, you would do A times B times the sign of the angle between them, right? So you'd have to convert the vectors from the format you have them in now to the other format to be able to do that. You'd find the magnitude of this with the Pythagorean theorem. You'd find the magnitude of this with the Pythagorean theorem, you know, two squared plus four squared, and then take the square root of that answer, and same thing here. Then you'd have to figure out, using the inverse tangent of five over three, what is this angle relative to the x-axis? Inverse tangent of four over two, what is the angle this with respect to the x-axis? Once you knew, the angle of vector A and the angle of vector B, you would subtract those angles to figure out the very small angle between them. Then you would have the magnitude of A and you'd have the magnitude of B and you would have the, the angle theta between the two vectors. Then you would do A times B times sine of theta and when you do that, you would get two or you would get a, a number very, very close to two. You could round it to two. And the direction comes from the right-hand rule, which we've already verified. But notice that that's kind of a pain. It, it would be, it's a lot of little sub calculations to do that. When I already have it in the proper format, uh, it's just easier to take the determinant this way and then the direction is already handled as part of the calculation. You don't have to do anything manual to figure that out. All right, that is the answer to this problem. And what I'd like you to do is solve both of these yourself. Make sure you understand how to take uh, the, the cross product of two vectors using uh, both methods, A, B, sine theta, and then use your right-hand rule to find the direction. And most importantly, in my opinion, how to take the cross product using this determinant method. Because notice in this case, as I've said before, I know these vectors are in the plane of the board, so I know when I cross product them, my thumb must point in the Z direction, so I can easily verify the answer. But what if these vectors, I think I mentioned this in the last lesson, but it's worth saying again, what if this is the real coordinate system uh, here, so you have uh, x cross y equals z. So this is x coming toward you and here's y. So here's x coming toward you and here's y and here's z, right? Now what if these vectors are not in the plane of the xy plane like they are here, right? Because the, these vectors live down here in the plane of the xy plane. What if they're in random directions? What if I have one vector pointed obliquely like this and then some vector pointed obliquely like this? Well, we, we can see that these are gonna form a plane and the cross product must be perpendicular to that plane. So it's gonna be basically pointed out this way or this way, depending on which way you cross product them, right? But you can't use the right hand rule easily. And I mean, where's your thumb pointing? I mean, yeah, you know it's that way, but how do you write it mathematically? You can't because we're not human computers to do that. I mean, I can use my thumb and say it's that way, but I don't know exactly what direction that thumb is pointing. So when you have a real life situation, 
when you have real vectors in three-dimensional space, like a vector for the rocket thrust coming out of a nozzle of a spacecraft or something is a three-dimensional, it's pointed in three-dimensional space, then you represent one of these vectors in i, j, k notation, and the other vector in i, j, k notation, and you cross product them using this. And then the answer you get, the directionality of the whole thing is already taken into consideration by the calculation. You don't have to think about it, right? So when we introduce the cross product, we talk about a, b, sine, theta, so you understand graphically what's happening. But in real life, you do the cross products in real life using this, in my humble opinion. When you get to calculus and engineering, this is the way you're going to do it most of the time. So I'd like you to solve both of these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get a little more practice with the cross product. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.